Hello, my name is Bhuvneshwari Balasubramanian. I'm the India Country Director at the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. Food systems largely includes the food production, which is from the agricultural point of view, to the food environment, which includes food processing and the food supply chains. It also includes the availability and accessibility and consumption of foods. And of course, the nutritional and health outcomes uh, as a result of consumption of foods, which is with a larger aim of providing healthier diets in improving health and nutrition outcomes. When it comes to trends in micronutrients, globally, it was earlier believed and the research suggested that the prevalence of micronutrient deficiency is somewhat around 2 billion across the world. We now know with recent publications in, in Lancet and other places is the two billion is actually a gross underestimation. In fact, it's somewhere around three to four billion people are micronutrient deficient in at least one form of micronutrients. And this is something that's prevalent across the world, but the low and middle income countries have a heavier burden of this. What are the challenges of not having access to sufficient micronutrients? Of course, it's the first one is the obvious health challenge. We do not realize our optimal health outcomes as a result of micronutrient deficiency. For instance, iron deficiency results in anemia. Zinc or iodine deficiencies have their own repercussions as well. We knew the challenges of or, you know, uh, not having a micronutrient rich food during our COVID uh, you know, health complications when everybody was consuming uh, zinc supplements at some point, uh, especially when they contracted the COVID-19. Uh, globally, this has been recognized as a challenge several decades ago and several interventions were put in place. The developing countries across Asia and Africa are soon catching up. We're recognizing that there has to be concerted efforts in mitigating micronutrient malnutrition so that a lot of challenges around mortality and morbidity can be addressed, especially at vulnerable life cycles, such as in, in birth, uh, children less than six months of age, children uh, under five years of age, and women of reproductive health need focused and concerted attention to provide sufficient micronutrients. So when we talk about micronutrients, it's about how do we have access to adequate and essential vitamins and minerals. Very often what countries do is provide supplementation, which is for a targeted population for targeted micronutrients. For instance, in India, we have the vitamin A supplementation for children below five years of age. And IFA, that is iron and folic supplementation, acid supplementation for women of reproductive age and adolescent girls. The challenges around supplementation is the idea of compliance. It requires strict monitoring of, on, on compliance of, of consumption. It is also a cost intensive exercise. The second popular intervention is of course in the promotion of a diet that is diverse enough that your food provides the essential micronutrients on an everyday basis. We know that 70% of the people in our country cannot afford a balanced diet. Our diets are largely around grains and cereals with limited consumption of dairy, meat or vegetables, which are also required for essential micronutrients. While it is the ideal scenario or ideal goal that all your micronutrients have to come from the food that you eat, that is not the reality in the current times. The third intervention which has shown promise across the world and has been done for decades in the developed countries and is catching up in developing countries like India is fortification, especially fortification of the staple foods which are consumed by population at large. And by staple foods, we mean oil, salt, rice, wheat and milk and adding about 25 to 30 percent of the required dietary allowance of micronutrients in these staple foods has been proven to be an effective supplementary strategy to 
consuming healthier diets in providing adequate micronutrients for a, on, on a regular basis. So what, what have we been doing in the country to mitigate micronutrient malnutrition? One of the biggest success stories is the salt iodization, which started in the 50s. Our parents have seen cases of people with goiter, and it took us a while to figure out that it was because of iodine deficiency. And salt iodization has been a huge success in mitigating goiter cases. Similarly, recognizing that foods or staple foods is such an effective vehicle to add micronutrients. In 2018, the FSSAI gazetted standards for five staple foods with, to be fortified with essential micronutrients. These include milk and oil with vitamins A and D, salt, which is double fortified with iron and iodine, and wheat flour and rice, which is fortified with iron, folic acid, and vitamin B12. Now, post this, the government has also introduced rice fortification to be scaled up across the country in the PDS system. This has so much promise in addressing the anemia reduction efforts that government has taken under the larger ambit of Anemia Mukt Bharat. Similarly, now this is about fortification. Government also does multiple other things. We have the vitamin A supplementation program for children below five years of age. We have iron folic acid supplementation for children, uh, adolescent children, and uh, for women of reproductive age. And of course, we also have something which is so unique to India called the Eat Right Initiative, which looks at providing healthier, safer, and sustainable foods across the country. There are different initiatives under this Eat Right India initiative platform, which looks at healthier food at workplaces, healthier food at schools and campuses, and looks at larger mobilization of population at large to generate awareness around consuming healthy foods. So government recognizes the challenge and recognizes that it requires multi-pronged intervention, including fortification, supplementation, and promotion of healthier diets. At GAIN, what we focus on in, with the larger outcome of promoting healthier diets is A, providing opportunities at the ground level in pro growing healthier foods. And by this, we mean growing biofortified foods, which naturally have higher content of micronutrients in the staple food that is grown. We also support in uh, fortification of staple foods in, 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 uh, with the outcome of improving micronutrient at the consumer level. Uh, we work with improving the food environment, be it food uh, handling, be it food safety, in ensuring that the food that comes to the table is not only you know, uh, healthier, but it's also more hygienic. We, we work also in understanding the consumer patterns and in influencing food culture to, to inform and to create desirability for choosing healthier foods. In that sense, we work across transforming the food system in production to consumption of healthier diets. So the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition is headquartered in Geneva and was launched at the UN in 2002 with the objective of mitigating malnutrition. Our vision is to promote healthier diets across the population, but with a specific focus on vulnerable population groups. And we do this by improving accessibility, affordability, desirability, consumption, and sustainability around improving and consumption of healthier diets. We work across countries in Asia and Africa through our different interventions with a larger objective of promoting healthier diets. One of the USPs and or the vision of GAIN is also the importance of building alliances and partnerships. 
We work very closely with not just government, but with private sector partners and with larger alliances across the globe in the effort to promote healthier diets. And these public-private partnerships are, we believe, crucial in ensuring that you not just have healthy foods in the open market, but also in the social and safety net programs across the world, which actually provides opportunities for people in vulnerable population groups to have access.